So we at AI Palette have put together a series of webinars in association with Food Industry Asia to essentially use AI to help you understand this new normal better. We will be analyzing changes in consumer behavior and how food preferences are changing in this situation. And for the discussion today, we will be focusing on three markets in ASEAN, Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand. With that, let's get straight to it. So uh, I will cover, I will start with covering the introduction, a little bit about the introduction and the methodology that we use at AI Palette then focus on the key drivers and motivations which are really influencing consumers decision look at the growing and the declining product categories in these three markets that we will look at and finally point out some notable changes in patterns in consumption and demand for food that we are seeing a little bit about myself uh, as May mentioned, I'm the head of innovation and insights at AI Palette, and I come with a background in brand management across Asia and the US. So AI Palette is a Singapore based startup, which is backed by the government of Singapore. We work with consumer goods companies to help them use AI and machine learning to predict and analyze trends as they evolve. We also help our clients understand what are the underlying consumer needs which are really driving and propelling these trends. And we do this powered by our language agnostic AI algorithm, which is trained to understand multiple non-English languages. For today's study, we will be using the algorithm's capabilities to analyze Tagalog, Thai, and Bahasa. Our algorithm is also trained on food specific data because the context in which consumers use uh, descriptors and language when it comes to food tends to be very different as compared to how they would use these words otherwise. For example, when the word hot is used in context of food, it typically means something that is spicy and rich and chilly and hot used in any other context typically refers to the temperature. So which is why we train our algorithm on food specific data. And lastly, all the analysis is done in the local language. So nothing is really lost in translation. Tell, to tell you a little bit about the methodology that we will be using, we started with identifying the local and relevant data sources on which consumers are going and having organic conversations about their choices and preferences. The great news is that this data can help us analyze near real-time trends, even uh, despite the circuit breaker and social distancing measures that are put in place, which makes doing on-ground research quite challenging in these times. Then we take these millions of data points and apply our language agnostic AI algorithm on top of that to essentially identify patterns in uh, and changes in consumer behavior and trends that are evolving and what we can what we do is that we can present the output in the form of the, a report as i'm going to do today but we can also set up a live dashboard to help you see trends as they evolve the data sources that we've taken into consideration for the analysis today are basically the most popular sources for uh, discussions around food in the markets that we're looking at. So we're looking at social media sources like Instagram and Twitter and search engine sources like Google. Uh, and when we look at these data sources, what we do is we analyze data points. So a data point is much more than just a mention or a post. We also look at likes, comments, shares on social media, as well as the volume of search queries on search engines like Google. And we really see these data points as a measure of popularity and was it what is really resonating with the consumers in these markets. So for the study today, we have analyzed uh, a total of 45 million data points for Indonesia, 18 million data points for Philippines, and 27 million data points for Thailand across the time period of 
uh, from January of 2019 to April of 2020. We use the 2019 data to help us identify a, a base trend line and then dig deeper into the data for 2020 to help us understand how consumer behavior is really changing and evolving. Next, let's look at the key drivers and motivations which are really influencing consumers' decisions in these three markets. So what we saw across the board that no surprises that health is really top of mind for consumers. Uh, and what we'll do is that we'll dig deeper into the broader topic of health to see what consumers are specifically concern, concerned about and what is driving their decisions. So health is definitely the number one driver in Indonesia and Philippines with taste at a close second. In Thailand, that trend actually flips where taste is the number one driver and we'll dig deeper into why that is in our uh, following slides, while health is the number two driver in Thailand. Some other drivers that we really saw emerge during this time is our concerns around price. Um, also, distribution and packaging really emerged as drivers. And again, we'll dig deeper as the presentation progresses into specific aspects of, of what consumers are really talking about. So first, let's look at the market, the Indonesian market, to see what are the drivers and motivations that are evolving in Indonesia. So first driver that we really saw was health, where consumers are really concerned about health uh, as uh, in the Indonesian market. And we, we reached this conclusion, as you can see in the graph below, health is at an all time high in the Indonesian market. Uh, and this was based on 12.72 million data points that we analyzed uh, from this market. But what we see is that the conversations around health are much more than just vitamins or immunity, where consumers are really concerned about holistic health and also other aspects like diet and slimming due to the sedentary nature of what our lifestyles have become during this lockdown. So, uh, so as I mentioned, consumer interest is more towards holistic health, so it's much more beyond immunity and vitamin C. And interestingly, what we saw was that when it comes to immunity as a topic, it's actually not, uh, it's below the high levels that it tends to be during the flu season in Indonesia. And also, we, we did not see a strong correlation in the minds of the Indo Indonesian consumer of vitamin C with immunity. At the same time, consumers are overall concerned about other aspects of health, such as, as we saw, diet and slimming, but then also conversations around nutrition are also at an all-time high, as we can see from this graph here. The second driver that we analyzed for Indonesia was around taste, where we really saw that uh, comfort food is really top of mind for the Indonesian consumer. And the consumers are really relying on this to help them cope with the lockdown and return their sense of normalcy. So taste as a driver is at an all time high. Uh, and what we also see is that the Indonesian consumer is really indulging her sweet uh, their sweet tooth as well with descriptors such as sweet and honeyed also being very popular the next driver that we looked at was distribution so overall the indonesian consumer is happy with the adequate availability wherein overall the sentiment around the topic of distribution is more positive than it is negative but overall uh, in distribution as a driver also is at an all time high in the month of April in Indonesia. Next, let's look at how the consumers are perceiving the, the channels that they shop at. So essentially what we saw was that both offline and online channels saw a peak in the month of April and March as shown in the graph in the two graphs below. But what's interesting is that online, the entire online channel is actually showing a sustained growth 
over this entire period of the COVID-19 pandemic, potentially signaling a change in consumer behavior and potentially an increased preference for shopping online. Next, let's look at the Philippines market to see how these drivers and motivations really evolved in this market. So what we saw is that at the peak of the outbreak, the Filipino consumer really relied on vitamins and supplements to help them fight the virus. So it was more about the short term benefit and protection from vitamins and supplements. And overall, digging down deeper into the broader conversation of health, what we saw was that uh, this also translated to an increased interest in immunity, vitamin C, as well as multivitamins as a whole. But there is definitely a pivot in the Philippines market where consumers are moving away from stocking up on vitamins and using multivitamins to help boost their immunity to looking for more broader natural home remedies to boost their immunity as well. The second driver that we really saw for the Philippines, emerging for the Philippines market was taste. So consumers in Philippines since the uh, uh, have really relied on comfort food as a to give them a sense of uh, you know really uh, comfort soothing and familiarity uh, and what we see is that taste as a driver is actually at levels similar to what it tends to be during more indulgent times of the year like november and december which alludes to the fact that consumers are relying more on indulgent food uh, to sort of restore their sense of normalcy during this virus. And we established this trend line by analyzing 3.25 million consumer data points. Another key driver which has evolved in the Philippines market is packaging. So packaging uh, is, it really peaked in the month of March, although it's on its way down. And what we saw is that concerns around packaging fall into three broad buckets. Firstly, consumers are concerned about prolonged storage. So uh, they want easy and prolonged storage, which is reflected in their use of descriptors like frozen food, canned food, or even plastic uh, as a storage material. And there were also some hygiene concerns with consumers also talking about boxed food uh, as and associating that with better hygiene. The other uh, aspect that consumers spoke about when it comes to packaging in the Philippines market is more around, uh, around storage concerns overall, with consumers talking about size of the packaging much more than they would under normal circumstances. With that, let's get into the Thailand market to see how the drivers and motivations played out in the Thai market. So firstly, what we saw is that consumers are really, uh, taste is the number one driver when it comes to the Thai market. So consumers are really looking to food as a way to make themselves feel better. And uh, they're really indulging in taste profiles that, that resonate and they, uh, that appeal to their palate, such as sweet which, tend, uh, sweet, which tends to be a very popular taste profile in Thailand. And taste as in overall consumer need in Thailand is at an all time high and it has remained at an all time high in April as well, based on 5.58 million conversations that we analyzed. Looking at health, which is the next driver in Thailand, what we saw was that the, uh, the Thai consumer is interested in much more than just immunity, where they also want to look for ways to lose weight or stay slim and stay in shape. And overall, health is uh, seen at a, a really top of mind driver for the Thai consumer uh, because it is at an all time high as compared to the last 15 months. Under the broader topic of health, what we saw was that essentially there is a very strong consumer interest in uh, food which helps boost consumers' immunity. 
which is strong, which is rich in vitamin C. And there's also very strong interest in multivitamins seen as a way for consumers to boost immunity. Overall, the Thai economy has taken a real beating because the revenue from travel and tourism really dried up. So that really translates to consumers searching for discounts and bargains in the Thai market to help them get through these tough economic uh, hardships. So there is a lot of consumer interest in products which are discounted, low priced in the market of Thailand. And this, the interest in these topics has sustained over the entire COVID-19 pandemic outbreak as it has as it has unfolded in Thailand. Next, we looked at distribution as a barrier. So what we are seeing is that the overall sentiment for distribution as a barrier is negative, with consumers really complaining about stocking, lack of availability and delivery delays. So these are concerns which are really plaguing the Thai consumer. But what we saw was that there is a sustained increase, uh, sort of increased consumer interest in online as a channel in Thailand as well, much like the trend that we saw in the Indonesian market, which potentially also alludes to the fact that there might be, uh, we might see an increase in penetration of uh, online channels and e-commerce channels in Thailand going forward if this trend persists. The next driver that we saw for the Thailand market was really concern around the safety and the quality of food, not only in terms of the food, uh, in, in terms of where it is made, but also where it is consumed, given the fact that a lot of restaurants uh, were really closed during the lockdown period. So that was really, uh, that we saw that coming through in the consumer conversations as well. Next, going into the growing and the declining product categories in these three markets. So what we really saw is that, firstly, looking at fresh produce. So fresh produce was saw a significant increase in Indonesia and Thailand, uh, in, in Philippines, sorry. Uh, with Especially in Philippines, fresh produce grew by almost 444%. So there was definitely an increased consumer interest in fresh produce, fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, especially driven by the fact that these are very closely associated with health, with eating healthy. What we, we saw this trend unfold a little bit differently in Thailand with consumers concerned more about price gouging, especially for items which are very popular and unavailability of items in their local market. So that really hampered the consumer experience for fresh produce in Thailand. The next category that we wanted to look at was staples, which are shelf stable, like rice, noodles and bread. So overall, what we saw was that because consumers are cooking much more at home, there was definitely an increased demand in these staples, uh, which is driven by not only the fact that they have a long shelf life, but also with consumers cooking at home more, they're consuming more of it. And interestingly enough, frozen food overall seems to have a healthier perception in Indonesia as compared to Philippines and Thailand, where for frozen food, a lot of the concerns that came out were about it being fatty or unhealthy. Next, let's look at the ingredients which help boost immunity and how, uh, especially the, the ingredients that are associated with immunity in the minds of the consumer. So what we saw was that in the market of Indonesia and Philippines, consumers really relied on trusted local remedies to help boost their immunity. In the market of Indonesia, for instance, a drink called Jamu, which is made from rich ginger, uh, sorry, red ginger, curcuma and cinnamon, saw a significant increase with consumers even talking about how they are replacing their daily cup of tea with a cup of Jamu. So uh, the popularity for this drink definitely reflected in the popularity for the underlying ingredients that are used to make this drink as well. 
In Philippines, we saw consumers relying on virgin coconut oil and ginseng to help boost their immunity. While in Thailand, it was more artificial uh, products like whey protein and multivitamins containing zinc, as well as some natural products like tamarind. Overall, the fact that a lot of us have been sitting at home and working from home uh, has definitely led to the snackification of meals. So demand for snacks is definitely on the rise. We saw a very healthy demand for indulgent products like cakes and cookies in Indonesia and for crackers in Thailand and also for chips and cookies uh, in sorry for crackers in philippines and for chips and cookies in thailand so overall there was a trend of really snackification of meals with consumers staying at home the last product category that we wanted to highlight was for protein. So overall protein, we saw both animal and already popular sources of plant protein saw a significant surge, essentially driven by the fact that protein is a very integral part of the recipes that consumers are making at home. So this reflected in an increase in consumer interest for both popular sources of plant protein as well as animal protein. And lastly, beverages and products which tend to be consumed in a context of socialization, such as iced tea, pizzas, and burgers, saw a decline in consumer interest and demand, driven by the fact that in a lot of these places, especially, uh, you know, the restaurants, uh, people could not visit the restaurants. So given social distancing measures, so, uh, socialization products, definitely saw a decline. Next, let's look at what are the other notable patterns in consumption and demand of food that our algorithm picked up. Firstly, what we saw is that in the Indonesian market, there was uh, an interest in imported or international food. This was particularly driven by categories like frozen potato snacks, cookies, but also beef and fish. Interestingly enough, fish, for instance, was driven by the fact that there was a, an, a ban on import of live fish from China during this outbreak, which led to some disruptions in the supply chain, which is what really drove the consumer interest in imported fish and uh, other forms of protein. We saw this trend of local versus international play out a little bit differently in the Philippines market with consumers really interested more in local ingredients, but overall sourcing as a topic of conversation is at an all time high in Philippines, as you can see from the graph on top. So sourcing is really uh, something which is driving decisions that consumers are making in the Philippines market. But overall, there is a preference for locally sourced food. And in Thailand, uh, there, was, there was actually a surge in both local food as well as imported food. So what, we, what our algorithm picked up was that there was no preference for the Thai consumer one way or the other. The other demand pattern that I'd like to highlight today is really this, the fact that homemade food was really the winner, especially in markets like Philippines and Thailand, where consumer interest in homemade food is saw a significant surge. And that was really driven by uh, concerns around hygiene and safety. Uh, and also some concerns about eating out and even ordering in from restaurants. So homemade food was really the winner in the entire COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in Philippines and Thailand. In Indonesia, there wasn't a trend that correlated with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic as far as homemade food went. And the last pattern that I want to highlight today is that the in the Indonesian market, we saw a reliance of consumers on natural trusted home remedies like for example red ginger uh, 
and so the indonesian consumer is really relying more on trusted home remedies to help them get through the pandemic while the while the consumer interest in philippines and thailand was more about vitamins multivitamins and artificial ways of boosting immunity so overall we saw that trend play out differently with the indonesian consumer relying more on natural remedies while filipino and thai consumers rely more on nutritional supplements to help boost their immunity that covers uh, the insights that i had to share with you today i'll leave you with this parting thought so some of these markets that we discussed are in the process of opening up right now just this uh, past sunday thailand opened up the malls and uh, shopping malls so we we expect these trends in consumer behavior that we have highlighted to evolve differently in the coming weeks and months as consumers really find ways to cope and deal with this new normal so please stay tuned for our the remaining web series that we're doing with food industry asia where we'll also be looking at how these trends evolve over a period of time and if you are interested in using ai to analyze and predict trends and changes in consumer behavior patterns in real time please feel free to reach out uh, to us at ai palace my contact details are on the screen we'd love to hear from you and find ways in which we can work together thank you for to the food industry asia team for having us with that i'll open up the floor for questions